Over the past five years, we've seen a dramatic spike in poaching. Every single year that we've had, there's been a, a grim new record that's been set. It's an illegal, multi-billion dollar trade that relies on a sophisticated global supply chain to cross borders and continents. It's a criminal network. I moved out from the road, they started shooting, I took a cover. And I fired back. Fueled by vast sums of money. Pangolin feature soup, which goes for approximately 1,750 US dollars. 80, 90% of rhinos' horns are fake. People are blending money, um, selling their house, to buy a buffalo horn. It can go up to 100,000 um, USD for, for a kilogram. It's rallied an army of activist celebrities with senior politicians now pushing big business to clamp down on high-speed trade routes. There are things that can really be done by people from operating cruise ships to airlines uh, to, to moving containers. It's a market sustained by age-old beliefs and a surging middle class in East Asia. When people desperate and they have money. I think they, they will do everything to open the window of half for them. It's a story of the fragility of institutions in emerging markets, as well as of the challenges a globalized world brings to international law enforcement. For example, we have been working with a few people, and at any point, we have already denounced who is their mandant. And to conserving some of the planet's most magnificent beasts, as well as some of its most unassuming. The killing seems to be fairly unstoppable. It's the fight to stem a rapacious network of supply and demand, a tale of trade in creatures both great and small. Kruger National Park, South Africa, home to some of the planet's most noble and most endangered species. But this is also a battleground the front line of a war on a global illegal trade in rhinoceros horn that sources its rare and protected products in this bush with the aim of delivering its goods to buyers thousands of miles away. This rusty wire fence is the frontier between South Africa and Mozambique. In recent decades, thousands of people have poured across it every year in search of a better life here in South Africa. But in the last few years, some of the people coming have been plying a far deadlier trade. The poaching of rhinoceros in Kruger Park has reached epidemic proportions. In 2007, just 13 rhinos were killed in South Africa. But such is the demand now that last year, the number rose to 1,215, nearly 5% of the global rhinoceros population. There are five species of rhinoceros, the largest and most numerous, the white rhinoceros, is the biggest of all land animals after the elephant. Its habitat, along with its close relative, the more aggressive black rhinoceros, ranges from central to southern Africa. But its prime sanctuary in the last century has been in South Africa, where 90% of black and white rhinoceroses are to be found. Rhinoceros horn is extremely valuable, commanding prices up to $100,000 per kilogram on the black market, more even than gold. Such demand has led to a second slaughter of an animal that's roamed the planet for millions of years. From the 60s to the 90s, as demand soared in increasingly prosperous parts of Asia, relentless poaching reduced the population of black rhinoceroses from an estimated 100,000 in 1960 to about 2,400 in the early 90s. Since 2008, after a 15-year lull, rhinoceroses are again under attack. The financial rewards on offer are often too tempting to turn down for the many impoverished Mozambicans living close to the South African border. Tracking suspicious footprints such as this is one of the most effective methods park rangers use to follow and catch the poachers who are willing to risk their lives for a rhinoceros horn. You have entrenched poverty uh, in rural communities in Mozambique where many of the poachers are recruited. Um, also in communities around national parks that have traditionally been excluded from national parks and historically excluded from national parks. Uh, very easy recruiting grounds. The money is ultimately at the key. You know, you, you have poaching gangs being paid um, anywhere between 20,000 rand, 60,000, I've heard figures up to 100,000 to go in as a gang and carry out a poaching incident. Poachers travel from towns such as Magude, some 60 kilometers from the South African border. 
They're hired by middlemen from disparate networks who travel to these rural communities with vast amounts of cash to offer the willing foot soldiers. The incoming wealth is on display in new villas with satellite dishes and foreign cars, springing up in recent years alongside the more traditional village infrastructure. The poachers travel by night, on foot and at speed into South Africa. There they'll track and shoot rhinoceroses before removing the horns with knives or axes and making a quick retreat back across the border before park rangers can catch up with them. Up to a dozen gangs are believed to be operating in the park at any one time, with incursions increasingly taking place across the park's western border from poachers based in South Africa. The poachers returning to Mozambique become the responsibility of Commander Sibola, who heads up a new national